Welcome to the Careers by Jen podcast, episode 215. This time on the podcast, Jen's subject is Why Slowing Down Makes You More Successful. Especially if you're a large tech company that shall remain nameless, who wants to sell more phones and computers. <laughs> You're listening to the Careers by Jen podcast with me, Jen Swanson, the podcast that helps you to get the job, love your work, and advance your career. Hurry up, get moving. No time to waste, tons of stuff to do. That list never gets any shorter. Does this sound familiar? Busy is a four-letter word. I should know. I live this, and it's not great. It's not great at all. Find out in this short and quick episode why slowing life down can actually make you more successful. Are you procrastinating? Do you want to start a job search but aren't quite sure where to begin? Is it all just a little overwhelming? At Careers by Jen, we have a five-day jumpstart your job search challenge to help you get unstuck and move toward finding your dream job. Every day for five days, you'll receive an email to your inbox that asks you to complete one task. Every task you complete moves you closer toward your goal. The best part about this challenge is that it's absolutely free. Come over to careersbygen.com and you'll see the five-day jumpstart your job search challenge on the right-hand side of the screen. Click on the image of Jen, sign up with your email address, and you'll be five days closer to reaching your goal. Why wait when you can get busy? Visit careersbygen.com after this podcast. It's the season of Lent in the church, which is celebrating the 40 days minus Sundays leading up to Easter. And traditionally, people would give up things they enjoyed as a form of penitence, like chocolate or sugar or wine. What the heck? (laughs) Well, this year, a theme that some of my colleagues and I are using in our ministry is the idea of giving up busy, of taking time to breathe, of stopping the rushing whenever possible, the idea of slowing down and just being for a time, for a few moments, for an hour, for dare I say, a day. And I love this idea because it's really hard for me to do this. I have many jobs, as if you've been listening for a while, you'll know. And I have lots going on. And our lovely daughter, Katie, is getting married in June. And so doing nothing is rarely possible. But I'm in with this theme. I am working on fasting from busy. And in my research on the topic for both uh, what I'm, I'm, I'm preaching and talking about this month and also on the podcast today, I have learned that slowing down can and often will make you more successful in your career and in life in general. Well, well. Wow. (laughs) So there's a good reason just to even try it. So let's take a look at what it means to slow down and how it can work in your favor. So let's start with time, with slow and steady. Often we want everything and we want it now right? We've got fast food, we've got fast fashion, we're, we're not happy when it takes a moment for a page to load when we're searching something in, uh, in our search engines. We want everything yesterday. But some things, like success, involve a long, slow evolution of learning that's not so sexy, that's not so exciting. It's a long, slow evolution of learning and of growth. And this takes time. And even taking time to name what it is you want is a way to start this long, slow evolution, this long, slow process. And then making a plan as to how you achieve this growth and this learning and this goal. This also takes time. Planning takes time to put 
together. Successful people set goals and set aside time to really solidify these goals rather than rushing ahead and hoping it will all just work out miraculously. Successful people set up environments whereby they can slow down at times to to dive in, to look after themselves, and to allow space for creativity and ideas to emerge. I can rush with the best of them, but truly great ideas and truly solid plans are hatched when there is spaciousness and when there is time to slow down and to dream a little. I think in our society we've lost the ability to honor and value that time just to dream, that time to imagine. It's all about productivity. It's all about how much we can accomplish in a day. And, and it's, it's less these days about discovery and imagination. And I think that's really sad. Busy is not a badge of honor anymore. In fact, I'm embarrassed to say it as often as I do when people ask how I am. And my, my first response is automatically, oh, I'm so busy. You know, I would prefer to not be as busy as I am and to be able to enjoy life instead of feeling like I'm an observer watching it zoom past. So fasting from busy, I think it's a great idea. And I'm going to work very hard this next while on making it happen. Another thing that can help slow us down and that can lead us to success is consistency and is developing good habits. Consistency and the development of good habits can breed success. And as we know, habit building takes time. You need to slow down to be able to do it. Doing something once or twice does not a habit make, right? Regular, repetitive, consistent action that at first has to be so intentional because you have to actually think about it until it later then becomes that neuro pathway pattern in your brain and then it becomes unconscious. That is habit. But at the beginning, it's remembering and it's determining that you're going to do this thing, whatever this thing is that you want to have as a habit. So what would you like to do on a consistent basis that you can intentionally begin today and then repeat regularly until it becomes an unconscious habit? What one thing would contribute to your overall success if you started doing it on a regular basis. There might be a few things you would like to do, but just start with one thing for today. And in time, it will be what you just automatically do. Consistency, habit, repetition. This takes time, but it's worth it because it leads to success. It is an example of slowing down to do this thing whatever it is, this habit that you want to instill, that will be worth it as far as your success goes eventually. Another thing is to focus, to zero in and complete a task to its finish. Have you ever been doing six different things all at the same time and you get all of them partly done, but nothing completed? I know I do this a lot. And it's really frustrating. It leads to a lot of unfinished tasks. And then at the end of the day, there's nothing that I can check off my list. And I am a list checker. I have lists everywhere. I have electronic lists and paper lists everywhere. And I have to check things off to feel accomplished. So not slowing down to focus on one thing and then and just flitting about doing six or seven things leaves me unsatisfied. It leaves me anxious. It leads me unfulfilled. And what would be better to do would be to slow down and to zero in on one thing at a time and to work on that one thing until it's complete or until it's as complete as it can be for the time being so that I can feel good about having done that one thing. And I can then leave that thing physically and mentally almost more important, and move on to the next task or the next item. It's more efficient in many ways 
to work this way. And it can actually accomplish more in the end than bouncing around from one thing to the next. So the recommendation is to slow down, to focus, to zero in, to double down whatever cliche you want to use and get something accomplished to its finish or to the finish point of that section of it if you're doing a great big project. And, uh, and the only way to do that is to slow down, but it will get you to your success much more quickly. The next thing to remember is the big picture. Try not to get bogged down in the details. It takes time to complete a major goal, as I've said before, but if you keep your eye on the big goal, if you, if you look at the big goal, the big picture every once in a while, you get inspired. And you'll remember that you'll get there one little step at a time. This is similar to the focus and advice, except that every once in a while, it's good to lift your head up and look at that big picture and remember why you're doing this task that is before you, that is big. And and to remember how the task that you're doing right now relates to the bigger picture or to the bigger goal. I was frustrated recently by the box, and I still am, by the boxes and boxes of stuff that we brought back into our home after emptying a storage locker that we had rented for a renovation project. We took on, as some of you know, a big renovation project a long time ago, like over a year ago. Um, And we had to move everything out of the bottom section of our home, the basement of our home into a storage locker so that that whole section of our home could be renovated and turned into a uh, basement suite for somebody else, a little apartment. And, um, and we had, we had taken everything to the storage locker. And now that the project is done, we brought everything that was still in the storage locker back. We've gotten rid of a lot of things, but we brought a lot of it back. And now we have to figure out what to do with it because this whole um, this whole idea was to, to, that I have to keep reminding myself what we were doing this for. The whole idea is that we decided to downsize our own living space and downsize our personal belongings, um, by building an apartment, a basement suite that we can rent out to somebody else who needs a home. Um, because two people do not need as much space as we've got and as we've been occupying. I mean, the kids come and go. The kids are in university and and school and uh, two of them have moved out permanently and the third one is at university and residence and the fourth one is, you know, here sometimes. But for the most most part, um, there are two of us living in a big house and we don't need this much space. It's wasteful. And so the big goal was to share our space, to reduce the stuff that we own and to only use what we actually need, and to simplify. And I have to keep remembering as I trip over yet another box at the foot of my bed um, that we're getting there. With every single box we sort through and with every load of stuff that we either sell on Craigslist or take to the Goodwill or give away to somebody, uh, we're getting towards our goal. But sometimes it's hard to stay focused on that big picture when you're stumbling over endless boxes of stuff that shouldn't be where they are in your life. So um, so try not to get bogged down by the frustrations right bef- in front of you and remember the ultimate goal when you're working on something. The next tip for you is to dive deep. Slowing down allows you to dive deeper. It's one thing to know a little bit about a lot, but what about knowing a lot about a subject to the point of becoming really proficient in it, to the point of becoming an expert in it? How often can you take time to dive deep into a project and to understand it fully and to know it thoroughly and then become someone that people turn to when they need to do that for advice in that area. Slowing down and diving deep uh, is possible, but it's not possible if you're skimming the surface all of the time. So being able to do those deep dives into a topic or into a project at work or into a task um, can really benefit your career in ways that you might not even imagine at first because you will become the go-to person on that topic 
if that's something uh, that you take the time to, to do. Persistence is the next one. This is the hard one. I know that I can do it, but it's not fast. It's not the overnight success thing that you hear about. Writing a book takes slogging and hours and hours and days and weeks and sometimes even years to complete. Getting a diploma or a certification or a trade ticket or a degree, that takes all sorts of time and repeated effort and energy and in many cases, lots of money to complete. Learning to do anything well takes persistence, like learning to play an instrument or a sport or even how to cook a fancy dinner or to write a memorable and moving speech. All of these things take time and practice and mistakes and learning and persistence. And you can't skip this one. Persistence pays off in time. It's actually the secret sauce of successful people. And the last one, I think this is the last one. This is a short episode, but this is the last one, is action. Imagining success is one thing, but it's only going to remain a daydream unless and until you take action. So you want to do something big. You have a project in mind. You have an invention. You have a goal. You have a dream. Great. But it's only going to happen if you make it happen with action. What is the next step that you can take right now, right after you finish listening to this podcast today? What is the next step that you can take toward that thing that you want to do? There is one thing you can do right now toward it. So what is that one thing? And when will you take that step? What will you do? And when will you do it? Successful people have done these things. They have slowed down and they have given time and effort to the subject that they are successful in. They have taken repeated action. They have been consistent and very persistent. They have dived deep into their subject area and they have done so with focus and with an eye always on the bigger picture. These are the things that make a person successful and they only work when you slow down and take a breath and focus. So what about you? Will you join me this next few weeks in fasting from busy and in slowing down in order to increase your success at work or in life? You will find when you slow down, you notice more. You learn more. You grow and you change. You might even just rest. You might Heal on the inside if you're stressed and anxious and worried. Maybe you need to slow down a little bit and take a breath because being a healthier you will make a more successful you. You will make fewer mistakes if you slow down. And actually, you will progress faster, which seems paradoxical, but it's true. You'll progress faster when you slow down than if you try to zoom toward your goal without putting in the time and the effort or the toil and the tears, as some would say. Busy is a four-letter word, and I hope for your sake that you just stop it. Until next time, remember to breathe. You've been listening to Careers by Jen with Jen Swanson. If you like what you heard, please share this. You know, if every single person listening today shared this episode with just one friend, our audience would be twice as big just like that. And the more people we can help with our content, the better. So help out a friend and help grow our audience by sharing this show with someone you know who would benefit from the content. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And together we can make a difference. Until next time, take good care.